Hi, welcome to another community learning video. So today what we're looking at is a project we're running. Uh, we are trying to get into the hands of as many people across Bristol as possible. Um, a laptop provided by Bristol Waste in this lovely big box. So we'll be looking at the laptop in a second. Um, there's a few different laptops but they're all basically set up the same as this. So if yours looks slightly different, this should be the same. We've also got a Vodafone MiFi device and we've got a little envelope which contains the SIM card with hopefully six months of data on it. Now that data does start from the moment we receive it so there may be slightly less on there when you get it but it's six months of unlimited internet. And so what we're going to talk about on this video is how to get all those things connected um, and how you basically start up a Windows computer from scratch, get yourself internet um, and get online. Right then, so here we are, we're about to um, rip open some of our, our stuff, have a look at it all. So the first we're going to look at, I'm going to put the laptop to one side, and I'm going to look at the SIM card and the MiFi device. So I'm going to open up our little SIM card package for the first time, and what you should see is a... Um, like a, a set of different SIM cards and it says on here we've got standard, micro and then nano. So the, I, th I believe the size we need is the micro which is the middle size. So we're just going to gently push out those pieces. I'm seeing my camera is going to focus a little bit better on this. So uh, where did we go? where's the camera gone? Okay, focus on my hand, there we go. So you can see uh, this is a standard SIM and you can see inside there's just these little Imprints. So to take out, what we're going to do is we're going to gently push out the middle section, not the very smallest one, um, just the next one. So put my nail in there on the line, like so, and then just work it around. It doesn't matter too much, you end up pushing out the middle one as the centre piece as well. In fact, it's exactly what I've done. I've accidentally pushed out all three there, so you can see um, I've pushed that out, and you can just gently, gently, gently pry it back in again. So we've got a micro sim there so i'm left with these two pieces we don't need this piece this is for older older style phones and we can just get rid of that i've got my micro sim which is the next size down okay so we'll put that down there for a second and hope that i've got that right get my camera to focus right <clears throat> so next thing we need the mi-fi so i should have adult supervision really but i'm just going to go ahead and open that up Let's have a look at what we've got in here. So we've got our little Vodafone MiFi device. Um, it's got a few little uh, readouts on the top to tell you what it's doing. So it uh, looks like we've got battery at the top and we've got probably Wi-Fi signal, any messages it receives, which we won't be using, um, and it's signal to the network, I'm guessing. Um, we've got a reset button on the bottom. In fact, that's where the SIM goes, work of it. And the WS button we will be using and a power button and there's your charging point on this side. What other exciting things do we have in here? We've got power and this is a battery or no, so just instructions. So we're going to put that to one side. So we've got a little power brick here and a charger. Um, with these devices, because you're going to be using it in home most of the time, you're not going to be using the portable function of it. Um, I would suggest just leaving it plugged in and wired in all the time. So just take your USB lead. There we go. I'm going to bring over a power power lead. There we go. And that can go straight in the bottom. There's goes one way around. This is a um, a micro USB, so you can see that the and if it decides to focus on, which it might not focus. There you can just see it goes in one way around only. <clears throat> Pretend I didn't do that. And that goes in like so. And you can see the device is now turned on straight away. It's showing a red for charging on there. Okay, so now we've got the fun job of getting the SIM card in. Had a very quick pause there while I checked which way around the SIM card goes. It's quite important. So I've just looked online and the SIM card goes in with the metal contacts up towards the screen. So not this way around, the white side, metal contacts going up, and the um, chamfered edge, you see the little edge with a bit cut out here on the on the right, 
that bit goes off to the right there. And all you do is you just push it in like this and you just keep pushing it in with your fingernail and it will click into place and it gets retained. If you need to remove this at any point you can just push it again with the fingernail and it will pop out. You can just see that it's popped out slightly. Push it back in. And then I can just close up this little little lid there. Okay. Right then, so we've now got our SIM card inside our unit. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down the power button for a second and see what happens. So I'm just holding it there now. I've let go. So I've pressed it for about two seconds. <coughs> And you see all the lights have lit up. We've got all oh, flashy lights happening. Very exciting. And to them all. I'll just grab a, a device you can see to see if we can um, connect to this and get some, get some Wi-Fi and test it. Okay, so now we're looking at the device a bit closer up. I've got a, an iPad in here just to show you um, the connection. We'll be bringing the laptop into this equation in a second, but just so you can see how it works all on one screen. So from the top here, we've got our power. So green flashing is charging. Uh, when it goes completely green, that means it's fully charged. If it's red, uh, low battery. Then the little blue icon here, that's just telling us if the Wi-Fi is on or off. So this device broadcasts Wi-Fi much like a home router would. So if you had a BT device in your house, this is just broadcasting Wi-Fi. <coughs> um, the blue means that it's active. So it's just on, switched on, so you should be able to find it with your mobile phones, with your laptop. Um, we're going to ignore the message function because it's not really important to us. And we've then got at the bottom these signal indicators. So um, four different colours on this one. So red would mean that there's no, no signal at all. <coughs> no, um, no SIM card, you've inserted the SIM card incorrectly. Um, we've got amber. Amber basically means we've got a poor signal, which is um, unfortunately an old 1920s house. Um, and the signal here is really bad, so that's to be expected. Um, hopefully you'll have either green, which means you're connected to 2 or 3G, or hopefully even blue, which is connected to 4G. So um, the bigger those numbers, the, the faster the, your internet connection will be. And what we'll find is if we turn the device over, you uh, might be able to make it out. We've got on here what's called the SSID. So that's the name of the Wi-Fi you're connecting to. And we've got a Wi-Fi key, and the Wi-Fi key is the key you'll need to type into your device to get access. So just as an example here for a mobile device, I'm going to, um, just to show you actually on, on an iPad, I've gone to settings, gone to Wi-Fi, and I can see Vodafone Mobile Wi-Fi 656. So that's exactly what I've got over here. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask for the password, which is that Wi-Fi key. So I'm going to go GAZ2 See, so I can get this right first time. Two, four, three, five, one. And it'll whir away when it's connecting to this. And there we go, it's connected. So this device is now connected um, to my Wi Fi. What's worth bearing in mind, actually, while we're just looking at it in general, is my iPad says it's got a fantastic signal. But that is the fantastic signal from this device over to this device. So it's got a great signal because they're literally sat next to each other. That doesn't mean that the Wi-Fi is working quickly because it's, it's the ability for this here to connect to the antennas to Vodafone's masts, which is important, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Right, so obviously this is no uh, use to you until you've actually got the internet to check, uh, but you could check this on your mobile phone or get something else to check for you. Um, all of our devices are using the Vodafone uh, network. Um, one thing you can do for any network, but obviously in our case, we're going to do Vodafone. You can go to Google and just do a search for Vodafone signal checker. And hopefully the first thing that will come up is this one. So vodafone.co.uk forward slash network forward slash status checker. Um, and you can bring up a map. And what you're going to do is just either use the automatic um, location finder, or you can just type in your postcode, put mine in. And what it will do is it will bring up the map of my location and it will colorize it and give you a little tick based on what you can expect. So it's saying that I've got good indoors and outdoors, 2, 3 and 4G. <coughs> now in my case, that's not really true because my house has got walls about 15 feet thick. So I tend to only get 2G with a little bit of 3G. I don't get 4G at all inside the house. But it gives you a good idea of what you can expect to get. 
if you've got no coverage at all in your area, then you're obviously going to have problems. But Vodafone's got very good um, coverage across the uh, country. Um, and if we were to you know, look at Bristol, you know, you'll find big areas of Bristol all with um, really good coverage. You can zoom out. And you can see most of Bristol is, is blanketed in good 4G coverage. That's the, the fastest internet connection. And you've just got some patches around here in sort of southwest Bristol area um, that are a little bit, a little bit worse. Okay, we're gonna look at our laptop now. So I'm going to uh, grab the box. Just pop over the tab here. And I'll slide out our lovely, lovely laptop. We'll get rid of the box. So in the box we'll have a uh, pat tested, so safety checked power cable. It's been tested by the council's uh, Bristol Waste Department. So um, you'll have a pass date on there so you can make sure this is all nice and safe. So this is the power lead for the laptop. Just going to plug that in. Ready to go. And you'll see the little, little light on there as well to show you've got power to it. And then we've got our laptop. So you might get a silver one, you might get a black one. They're all they're all Dell machines, I think. Um, and they should be very, very similar to this. And this is probably the, the most common model that you'll see. It's all nicely wrapped up. Stuck to the plastic bag. There we go. Right. So we've got our nice little Dell laptop here. And you'll notice on the bottom, most important thing for you on the bottom here is the asset ID. So I'm just going to bring that down there so you can see it. So it's this green asset ID. Um, if you should have any technical problems with your laptop, you'll need to call Bristol Waste Company. So Bristol Waste Company, their phone number's on the bottom, and this is your asset tag, so this number beginning with Bravo. So you can call them up, um, identify yourself, and as long as we've done our paperwork correctly, we should know who you are, and we can ascertain that this is a laptop you should have had from us um, and there we go right so these are refurbished laptops they were expensive laptops but they've been used um, and they've now been cleaned refurbished made sure they're working okay the batteries on them might not be very new so we'd always recommend where possible you're going to use the, the power cable uh, which goes in I only have one of these for years I can't remember where it goes the power cable goes in the back there um, again that might be slightly different on different models so Okay, I'm just going to open up the laptop. So the other thing you'll see is you've got a checklist inside. And so that checklist has been done by Bristol Waste just to let you know what things have been checked on there and some details about the warranty and support you can expect to receive. Put that to one side. <clears throat> so again, all these laptops are uh, slightly different, but most of them will have a, a power button somewhere around here. So you just press in the power button and turn the laptop on. Very exciting just watching a Windows computer boot up now. Okay, and so we're straight into Windows. It's got Windows 10, and it's what's called a clean installation. So there's no rubbish on here. Um, be very careful to set it up as well as possible. Um, the only additional software that you have on these machines is things that we thought you might need. So we've got Google Chrome, which is our recommended browser. Um, we've installed LibreOffice, which is um, a free version of Microsoft Office, so things like Word and Excel for doing expenses and um, writing letters, applying for jobs, that sort of thing. And we've also got some software. If I uh, use the trackpad, um, you can see this very well, but I'll just go down to the bottom. There we go. We should have a piece of software on here, which hasn't loaded yet. There'll be a piece of software loading in a second, um, just in case you're wondering what it is, which is basically a way for Bristol Waste to connect your laptop. So they can't do that without your permission, um, but if you have technical problems, they can log into the machine to uh, have a look. So we want to connect to the internet now. We've got our, our, uh, our MiFi here, which is sat there still with a poor signal, but it should be good enough to uh, try things out. All I'm going to do is go down to the bottom down here, <coughs> and hopefully I might get a bit closer so you can actually see the see the screen with a bit more clarity okay so there's a little uh, icon down here it's either going to look like a little wi-fi symbol so the little and stacked antennas 
or in this case, because it's not connected, you've got this little symbol of a world with a little cross through it, so it's got no internet. And I'm going to click with the left mouse button on there, and you'll see straight away I've got a nice long list of um, things it can connect to. So I've got my, my own personal home Wi Fi here, um, all my neighbours' things, and the printer upstairs. Um, the one I'm interested in is my Vodafone mobile Wi Fi. So, as we said previously, it's, it'll be exactly the same code here. You don't need to change it, you just need to select it. So I'm gonna hover over it, <clears throat> I'm gonna left click. What we want, we want the connect automatically ticked. So that just means that whenever this is on, and whenever you turn this on, they'll try to connect to each other and you'll get internet. And then we just go to connect. And it'll say network security key, exactly the same as on that demonstration earlier. Um, you've got your Wi-Fi key at the top here. So what I'm gonna do is type in that Wi-Fi key once more and hope to get it right again. I'm not quite sure what to type that. Two, four, three, five, one. Um, so the question it always asks is, do you want your uh, PC to be discoverable by the PCs and things on your network? Um, it's purely if you've got things like a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi printer, something like that. So we'll just say yes. It's not a, a major concern. And there we go. So it says connected, secured, and you'll see that on the bottom down here, might let's just make it out and try and get the camera a bit closer. I can just about see it. Um, you've now got this little icon here, which is like a, a series of like a quarter semicircles in there, which just shows the, the quality of the signal strength. Obviously, again, that's the signal strength of it connecting to this device. What we'd suggest normally. If your signal is a bit poor in your house, put this back in the right place. Um, I would put this next to the window where possible. So if you can put this next to a window and leave it there, but still close enough to your laptop to work, you'll get a better signal normally. I mean, we've even had times we've hung it out the window. Wouldn't recommend it, but you know, if you've got no signal at all in your house, um, that will work better. Okay, so that is us online. I can now go over to Google Chrome. I'm going to double click on that. I think I double clicked on it. And it will take you straight to our web page. And so here you can look for support for your laptop. And so we've got information here about um, courses. Uh, so there's our full website here. So there's plenty of courses and things you can enroll on for free. Just accept the cookies. And we've got information about the laptop, how to get help and issues, um, how internet works if you're using your own internet connection and technical support and repairs internet safety videos it's all there for you so that's it in a nutshell that is us getting online and i think oh, also yeah we've got the um zoom and hangouts and other apps on here as well so if you're going to be using um, some video chatting things they're already installed on the laptop as well all right i think that is the laptop basically covered thank you very much